beyond our dimension. This is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. Hello, everybody. Happy Saturday to you. And if you're on the other side of the planet, happy Sunday to you. Tonight, we have a busy schedule, and I'm about to bring the guest in, but I'm waiting for just one second here to make sure that it's all set up properly and that you can see me and hear me. So I see myself there, and I see hello to everybody. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, actually, right before we get started, just to let you know a few things. Um, in the description below are links to our other channels, our links to our Facebook page, our link to my, a link to my personal Facebook page, which you will see my last name is Reynolds. Mara is my wife. And um, I think there's a few other things there, like our merch store and, and whatever else is going on. So that is all there. All right, so let's get right to the guest. And I'm happy because I'm right on time tonight. So our first, well, actually we have two guests tonight. One is Amy Robeson. I hope I'm saying that properly, or Robison. And then another is Kate Colson. First we have Amy Robeson, Akashic Record Master, Teacher, Healer, and Founder of Sacred Awakening empower, that empowers individuals through her powerful Akashic Records program to tap into inner potential for transformation by cultivating curiosity to live their best lives. Amy speaks light codes and light language, plus she shows you how to be courageous enough to walk your own line path. So that's what we're going to talk to Amy about today. Let's bring her in. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Amy. I don't know if you were... Um, can you... Can, I, I don't know if you were watching on YouTube as well at the same time, but I was introducing you to everybody. Oh, no, I wasn't. Oh, that's okay. Um, can you say test a couple of times? I think your volume test, might... Test, test, test. Your volume might be a little low. I don't know. We'll see what the... Audio. My volume... Uh, we'll see what the audience says, and if they if they ask me to turn you up, I'll just turn you up manually. Okay. But nice to meet you. Thanks for joining us. Nice to meet you too. And I was telling everybody about your about your Akashic Records program and about light codes in light language. And so, for what I know about you, you were in the corporate world, and somehow you wound up over here. How did that all happen? That um. Just following the energy to tell you the truth, my, um, my, my heart when I was in the corporate world knew I wasn't long for that world and I didn't know what I was going to do. And I was in a dark place and I didn't want to go into a super dark place where I didn't want to return. And, um, so I, I knew I wanted to start meditating and I knew I wanted to start, um, doing dream interpretations because I, I have had premonitions and dreams that came true. Like I would dream about them when I was a kid and then they would come true later on. And so I went to learn about dreams. And so from that experience of just wanting to learn how to meditate and wanting to learn how to interpret, interpret dreams, I just kind of followed the energy and I ended up finding the Akashic records and discovering I was really good at it and mm -hmm. wanted to leap into that. Did you have some sort of spiritually transformative experience that gave you the ability to access the records? Mine wasn't like instant where it was more of a following the energy. I, I knew things when I was little, I would talk to angels. I would do, um, I would know things about adults that I didn't that I shouldn't have known. I would know things that were going to happen, but it wasn't until my mid twenties when I started playing and, and looking at different things where I was like, mm, this is something that I'm really good at. My grandma was a tarot card reader. I learned how to do tarot cards when I was younger. Um, and so I come from a line of very intuitive women. Well, how do you access the records? For for me, I teach people how to access the records using crystal and energy and the 
in a simple prayer. It's a very simple method. I don't want anything that's super long drawn out. So we access the records using crystalline energy. And that that I was taught through the guardians of the records. The guardians are the, the masters, teachers, and loved ones that give us love and guidance and support inside of the Akashic records. All right. Can you can you be um can you expand on that? What do you mean by using cr crystalline energy? Yeah. So each student that I teach, we're I'm guided to assign and attune three different types of crystalline energies to them. And these crystalline energies act as energetic keys that unlock their Akashic records. The crystalline energy could be similar to each student or very different per student in each round that we do. Um, each particular crystalline energy is going to support them in different ways where someone might be really needing more grounding energy. So we might, they might get assigned like smoky quartz or black tourmaline while someone else might need a lot more protection where, and um, want to open more up. So maybe they're assigned amethyst. Hmm. All right. When you access the records, what can they do for us? Oh my God, they can do so much for us. So for anybody that's not familiar with the Akashic records, every word, deed, thought from the moment your soul is incepted is recorded in the Akash. And we can open up the Akashic records to receive, receive love and guidance and support in any and all areas of our life. And so for the way that I teach it and the way that I use it, you can use the records for the past, the present, and the future. So you can use the records for like, hey, um, I'm having a hard time communicating with my spouse. What is a better way for me to express my feelings while still feeling seen, heard, and while also being compassionate towards my partner? Another way we can use the records is for future possibilities. Maybe you want to start a business or maybe you want to discover what your life purpose is, or maybe you want to in, invest in something. You can utilize the records for something like that. You can also use it for the past. And I love using the records for all of, all of it, the past, the present, and the future. The past, I love a lot because what we end up doing when we go into past life regressions is we have the opportunity to reclaim fragments of our soul that is frozen in time through past life regression. And um, the best way to explain like frozen in time is if you've ever had a conversation with someone where maybe they're having a hard time and all of a sudden you keep thinking about that conversation over and over and it doesn't like leave you or maybe you had a bad day at work and you can not keep replaying that bad day at work over and over again or um, maybe you're thinking about a movie and you can't stop thinking about it sometimes our energy is still left in that space and time and when we have traumatic events happen and traumatic can be small or big. And I like to use the analogy, like maybe you dropped an ice cream cone when you were a kid and your mother yelled at you and said that you shouldn't have dropped it and no, you're not going to get a new one. That could be a traumatic event for someone, but maybe not for another person, just depends on the perception and what happened and everything like that. And we can use the records to go reclaim that fragment of our soul and heal that space and time. Have you ever found that when you've accessed someone's Akashic records, that you access something that they completely forgot about, which appears to oh. be plaguing them in this life? And once they access that, that they find happiness after ac accessing it. Yeah. So, um, yes. And I'll give you an example. I, the, first person that's popping into my mind as we went into the records and when I opened her records I could smell nothing but garbage like rotting garbage and um I'm like mm, that's really interesting and so I saw this visual of like just rotting garbage underneath like a rug so we peeled it back and we're investigating it and where we were brought to was a space and time where her brother was getting in trouble for something. And that event in her life 
left a long lasting impression on how she would not only navigate and communicate with males in her life, but how she um, felt towards her dad. And by going back to that space and time when her brother was getting in trouble for something and how she felt and what she was fearing, we were able to like reclaim that fragment of her soul and to also bring peace to that experience and to bring peace to her inner child as well. You mentioned regression. Are you also a hypnotherapist? No, no. We can do past life regressions inside of the Akashic records. Wow. So I don't. How do you do that? Practice hypnotherapy. Um, it's it's really interesting. You when you open up the records to do a healing, what ends up happening is the conscious mind gets cloaked. Um, so that the subconscious mind can reveal what wants to be revealed in the session. And so when I do a, a past life regression and how I teach my students to do past life regressions in Sacred Awakening, our healer's edition, is we will have the client share, just like kind of similar in a hypnotherapy session where I'm not telling them what they're experiencing or what they're seeing, they're communicating back to me or to the practitioner, what it is that they're noticing when we land in a past life. And so like we might land in a past life from this lifetime, because anything that's from, let's say 10 minutes ago can be a previous lifetime, or we can land in a, in a lifetime that's not from this lifetime as well. And it can be any type of past life. It can be a human past life or some other type of being past life as well. All right. Sorry, I'm just adjusting my mic. The, yeah, uh, no, the people no that are telling me my mic is too low. So I'm trying to kind of see if I can get a louder, a louder sound here. Well, I'll figure something out. My wife says you're beautiful, by the way. Oh, thank you. All right. So did your wife see Mara? Yes. What, yeah. I, that's why I, I love yeah, that. In, thank, yes. It's the name after both of us. A lot of people think it's, it's, that's my last name, but it's my wife. Well, name. that's what I thought. And one of because when your name popped through my, one of my good friends from, from school is Mara. So oh, cool. that's her name. So I love it. Oh, that's awesome. Um, now you, well, in the beginning, I said that you speak light codes and light yeah. language. What is the difference between the two? So light language, you can just say that's what it is. And then when you're speaking it, light codes are what are coming through. And light codes can be anything from um, a, a vibration, a movement, a, a symbol, a sound. Um, and so the codes are coming in to assist with removing trances from our conscious and subconscious minds. Um, oftentimes we get indoctrinated or we um, end up in a belief system that's not truly in alignment with our soul's path. Um, and when I say trance, it's similar to like, if you watch a TV program, we go into a trance to watch that. Or if you're watching something on social media and we can go into all sorts of different trances throughout our lifetime. And what light language does is it supports in releasing you from that trance of whatever it is that we're working on in that particular healing or whatever's wanting to come through. And oftentimes I'll do different types of healing meditations. I do everything inside of the Akash and what light language is, it's a cosmic language of the soul. It speaks higher self to higher self. It pushes past the conscious mind to the subconscious mind. And what it does is it communicates what human words cannot communicate because there aren't human words that want to come through. And so what the light language does is it packs like a bigger punch than me trying to articulate the essence of what's wanting to come through during that healing. Do you think that when you see religious people speaking in tongues, that they are possibly doing some sort of light language or speaking. Yeah, it's it's very very similar. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. It just it just depends, and you know, like 
every light language and how people channel it, it can be very different from one person to the next. And I always tell people, you know, um, be very discerning of who and what you're listening to in terms of light language, because it's like tuning into a radio station. What radio station do you want to tune into? And does that work with your frequency? doesn't mean all light language is good or bad. What I'm saying is sometimes there's a frequency that doesn't match what it is that you're on the path to work on, or it does match and it will accelerate what it is that you're wanting support with. When a person's speaking light language, are they channeling their higher self? Or is it possible possible that they could be channeling their guides or angels or even perhaps a negative entity? It's all of the above. It's all of the above. It's it's very galactic. You can be channeling angels, you can be channeling something that's not of light as well. And so that's why you, you do want to use discernment, just like anything in your life, you want to use discernment. But yeah, with light language, you can be channeling something from your higher self, you can be channeling something from an angelic realm, you can be channeling something from the Octarians or Lemurians or um, something of a lower force that has a something something that it wants from you hmm. interesting that you brought up arcturians and pleiadians do you consider yourself to be a star seed oh yeah for sure uh did you come have you been to earth many times or you, or was your last incarnation not on this planet i have had many many earth carnations uh reincarnations yeah i i have been here many many, 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 many lifetimes. Do you think you're coming back next time? You know, that's an interesting question because I was thinking about that. You know, you hear everybody that says, oh, I never want to come back. <laughs> yeah. I, I was thinking about this today, actually. And I'm like, ah, what do I have to come back a couple more times? I don't know. And I was just sitting with that idea of what does that look like? Because oftentimes when from my understanding and when people go in to do, when souls go in to do a life review, they go in to see what their mistakes are. They get to look at it from a different perspective. And sometimes they sign up to come back to make wrongs right. They also come back because they have knowledge that they want to share and they want to assist others in ascending. And so uh, I'm kind of like, I don't know. I want to see where this life goes and see see how I feel at the end of it. And I'm open to see where, where it goes from there. And I don't know. I, that, that's my honest answer. I just don't know. Well, it's honest. Are you up for um, taking questions from the audience as well? Yeah, absolutely. Right, so... do, do they... Are we doing like many readings or what are we doing? I mean, we're just, we're here live. I, you know, the, I think YouTube has cool. changed the way they set up their platform and I can't even figure out how many people are here watching, but, um, anyways, yeah, I usually try to have it where let, let it, where, you know, they'll ask questions. They may ask questions about Akashic records oh. or, or light language or, you know, whatever else that you're up to. So I, I just sure. kind of like to leave it open and, and involve them as well. And, um, and someone already got excited reading. So what did you mean by that? So um, I'm happy to do like um, rapid fire readings for anybody on here that has a question. I just need an, their name and then I can give a, a quick little answer oh, really? to whatever question that they have. Yeah. All right. If someone wants that. So without even seeing them, all you need is their name and you can. No, no, it. I don't need to see them. I just um, usually if I just read the question myself, I can usually get it. But since you're reading it to me, I just need you to read me their handle and I can usually get information that way. All right. Um, well, someone, do you know much about orbs? Orbs? Yeah. Sure. Someone was asking, do, what do neon green orbs mean if you see one, I guess? So it just depends. So sometimes that's a spirit that's near you that wants to, it could be an angel. It could be a past loved one. Sometimes it's the reflection from the sun with the camera as well. Um, so it just depends. Usually an orb is a good thing. 
All right. So when someone's, at, I mean, people are already saying, yeah, I want a reading, a rapid reading. Do I just, do they need to have a question for you or do no, just... they just need to ha have an, an open-ended question, avoid okay. yes or no questions right. and no medical questions just because it, we don't like it's, I can't, I need more time with that. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's better. So if, yeah, she needs a yes or no question. That's no, the... no yes or no oh, questions. No open yes or no. You need an open, yeah. so like an open-ended question is what you need from them? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Open-ended, because yes or no is very limiting. And the way that I teach the Akashic Records and the way that I uh, use the Akashic Records, when you ask an open-ended question, you get more information. Okay, yeah. See, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad that you did that, because people are just responding with, I want a reading. And that's, yeah. <laughs> that's not like a question. There's no question here. Um, all right, here's one. Ashley Stevie, the question is, what is my 2026 looking like? Oh, um, I'm seeing a lot of green for you. So it's a very heart centered path, meaning you're going to get more in alignment with what your tr heart truly wants to do versus what your head wants to do. Um, and so if you actually start wearing green and working with the color green, green crystals, having green plants around, wearing green in any way is going to help you get more in your center for, for that. All right. Medium Kim Copeland, um, would love a reading if there is time regarding what would it be for me to adopt another golden retriever? This is this, there's a person that knows a person that you're going to get this golden retriever from. And so the best thing to do is they're saying to put your fillers out post that, Hey, I'm looking for this. Um, tell friends, like the more people you tell, the more that they're going to get, cause you're going to need to get it from a person from a person. So it's, it's putting your feelers out is going to be the best way to do it. And wow. you'll get it pretty quickly. Just, you got to hammer it home. Like let everybody know that you're looking for one. All right. Um, all right. Let me hear this. Let me catch up. Um, Sabrina, uh, gosh, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I apologize, Sabrina Sabharwal. That's okay. Sabrina Sabharwal. I hope I pronounce it right. What am I supposed to be doing in my life now? Mm, what do you mean by that? Ah, okay. So the first thing that the guardian said was to take a back, to take, to take a back seat in your life. And I'm like, what the heck does that mean? Mm -hmm. and what they're saying is you're trying to control everything. It's control, 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 control. And so for once, let the universe drive the car and you sit in the back seat and you tell the universe, these are the things that I want and I'm willing for you to take me on the ride without me controlling which direction you're going to go in order to land there. And so it's not being a backseat driver. And so it's more so just saying like, this is what I want. I'm going to surrender and I'm going to just enjoy the ride. And I'm going to trust that you're going to get me there safely. Right. Like you just have to trust that the universe is going to give you direction. Yes. Why, let me tell my wife that one was a medical question. Oh, okay. All right. By the way, guys, no medical questions. Um, let me get to the next one. Um, oh, gosh. Oh, where, where's the name on that one? Oh, here it is. Bayou Physical 39. My name is Elsie. When will I meet a partner? I'm just hearing soon. So what they're saying is, I'm hearing to tell you about the color red. Start incorporating red into your life. Red meaning passion, red meaning um, with the root chakra, you're rooted in this new truth that your partner isn't going to arrive soon. And soon, I mean, within the next 
three to four months soon. Hmm. All right, here's another one. But red's going to be a big color for her. Why do you think that would be a big color? If you think about the root chakra, root chakra is all about safety and home and energy. And then it's also um, where you're in like your beginning of humanness starts in terms of your like tailbone and like all of your reproductive organs and all that stuff. And they're saying that the red is going to one, just support her and feeling more safe and two in recognizing that passion and that love. Cause also people recognize red, like roses and love and things like that too, but it's more so the root chakra within ener energize and safety and home. Do you think that we, carry some element of our dna with us lifetime to lifetime yes yeah yeah how, how do we activate so one is our dna holds we have trillions of trillions of cells in our body of dna and the majority of those cells have DNA strands in out of the trillions. I think it was like the last time I looked, it was over 32 trillion. And um, we go all throughout our life activating DNA through meditation, spiritual practices, conversations, experiences, growing. And then you can sit down and actually go, I'm going to activate my DNA. And I do, um, it's called DNA restructuring and um, I have a program that's called DNA Awakening Accelerator, and we activate 24 strands of DNA. And what 24 strands get activated is totally up to the guardians and the higher self that what whatever one whatever wants to be activated. What's in the DNA holds dormant memories and dormant gifts and dormant experiences that want to be embodied. And so it's really neat. So you can just activate DNA by just doing your spiritual practices. All right. I mean, just like even by meditation and yeah. what other because things we can't, besides that? Because meditation it, seems like it helps everything. Med, yeah, it, it truly does. Um, it could be exercise. It could be, um, you could color, paint, do some form of art. Um, the Akashic Records would be... Uh, pulling cards or playing with crystals or anything, anything could be a spiritual practice. Washing dishes can be a spiritual practice. It's a, what, how you perceive what that is. And the, the goal for me in life is to allow everything to be a practice, meaning I'm not holding on to attachment of outcome where I can just be present with what it is that I'm doing is is that a practice in itself? Absolutely, because it's 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 hard. It's hard, especially I have a toddler and she screams, and that's hard to stay present. <laughs> All right, here's uh, I'll kind of get back to some more um, readings. Uh, sure. Someone is named Moon Goddess. What can you tell me about the current energy surrounding me personally at work and spiritually? And she says, "Thank you so much. Sending you tons of positive." Thank you. So what I'm seeing is just a lot of energy swirling all around your head. And it's just like swirling, 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 swirling. And everything else is very calm. And so what that's telling me is there's something that's creating like chaos. Um, and it's chaos in the mind. What they're saying is, they're saying that you're used to it. Like it's, it's so normal to you that it doesn't even feel chaotic. And so one of the things that they're recommending is that to swipe your energy on your head every day, to just go like this, like I'm calming, I'm calming my energy. I'm calming my energy down. I'm, I'm letting my mind relax. And just the act of touching the head is going to bring that down. They're also saying that um, you would benefit from working with different types of flowers um, and you can like purchase the flowers. You can look at pictures of flowers on the internet. So you don't have to actually purchase like real fresh flowers every day because that would be expensive. But um, 
but looking at different flowers and working with the essence of that flower will help calm the chaos of the mind and bringing yourself back to center every time that your mind starts to really go on different um, they're calling them wandering walks, which I never use that term. So it's like the mind likes to wander in all sorts of different directions, which then keeps you in a state that you're not able to make clear, direct decisions when you would like to. You're good at making decisions, but it's clear, direct decisions when you would like to, when it's like, I want to make that decision right away. So I hope that's helpful. All right, Marilyn W., how and when will my financial problems resolve, afraid of becoming homeless? This is what they're saying. They're, they're, when questions can sometimes be hard, and what they're, the immediate response that the guardians were saying is that it's time for you to start getting crafty. And what they mean by that is start looking at your resources. What are you able to start doing to make some extra, they're calling it, you know, like the side hustle, the side cash. Like, what are you able to do right now that will allow you to get really creative in bringing some extra cash in? And they're saying that if you start thinking every day, you ask yourself, what's a creative way to make money today? What's a creative way to make money today? After two weeks of doing this, you're going to start really getting some big ahas of going like, oh, I, I think that would be really great. Oh, I, I know someone that I could ask for help with that. And um, they're also saying. Um, look into to, to donations, uh, donating and what that looks like in terms of making some cash that way, too. So. Hope that's helpful. All right, my wife Mara is asking, will her trip to Armenia be a successful one? Let's ask it slightly different. And that well, would that's be right. you can't have a yes or no question. Yeah. So the, the question would be is like, how can I make my trip to Armenia more more successful? Right. Does that sound good, Mara? Yeah, yeah she okay. said yes. Okay, awesome. It it they're saying it's all in the little details. So part of it's going to be for it's taking a trip in a different way than you've ever taken a trip. And what they're saying is get down to the little tiny details of things that you want to experience. Um, and they're using this example, like I want to smell the most precious coffee. And when I smell it, I'm going to feel so elated with delight. And they're wanting you to get very detailed on little, tiny, small experiences like that, that you can get detailed on. And then also detailed on the types of ex the trips and excursions you want to have and what that will bring for you as well. Because what you can do then is start visualizing those things ahead of time. And it's going to be a really successful trip in that, in, in that sense. Also, I'm seeing a lot of um, indigo blue and it's not necessarily you calling that color and there's something really um, important about that color. And when I say indigo, it's almost like um, like a starry, kind of like your background, Jeff, like that indigo starry. I don't know what that means. What, 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 what's the importance of that? I'm just asking the guardians that. It's like almost like you're you're being wrapped in this like cosmos like blanket and it's going to there's going to be an opportunity for you to have like an an enriched enlightened experience that's very it's not out of body it's it's I just, I keep seeing you wrapped in like a little blanket of cocoon and it's like, you're going to wake up to something new is what that means. She said, yes, it's true. Oh, good, good. Okay. And she says, thank you. 
Oh, you're so welcome, my dear. Um, Lisa Anna, and it, the question is, how can I do better with my family relationships? Stop, slow down, listen. It's really important to listen before reacting. And then give yourself permission to put yourself in their shoes and then give yourself permission to see the perspective that they might see of you instead of assumptions. Where families get in trouble sometimes is there's a lot of assumptions and a lot of unmet expectations. And they're saying, by stopping and slowing down and listening, you're going to start seeing and I'm putting that quotation, seeing what's really being said versus what you've assumed was said. Also, you're going to have an opportunity to react very differently. And when you start reacting differently, everyone else will start acting, reacting differently to you. And um, they're saying you can practice this with other people outside of your family first, and it will become easy. It will be, it'll be easier for you when you do it that way first versus with family, but it's like really stop and slow down and listen. And it's okay to not respond right away. Do you think animals have spirit guides? I know animals are spirit guides, but. Say if someone has a pet, you think, you know, like each animal would have its own animal guide. Uh, you know, I think that's possible. I just had. Um, my uh, one of my clients just gave my mother-in-law a mediumship reading and her cat that passed on is a guide for her living cat right now. So yeah, it's it's very possible. Well, are you saying then that animals can, you know, like our pets can be spirit guides for us? Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. How do they do that? Yeah. So like um, we had a box or we had to put her down. She passed away less than two months later. On, another boxer ended up at our doorstep. <laughs> like it, she definitely guided him to, to our home. And so animals have a different perception than humans. They, they are able to connect to different realms. They're able to sense different things. And so they, they can guide us. They can help. They have different senses or uh, not def different senses, but more in tune senses than we do sometimes And their capacity, like for dogs to love is 10 times greater than we could ever imagine that we could even have. And so for pets, they, I think they come to us and they support us in our journey. And we're also there to support them because it, not every human comes in and is always a human. And I had a dog that, um, he was just hard. He was rough. Like he would, he would mouth. He would like, I had to send him to doggy boot camp. Like he would just mess with me to mess with me. And, um, he was just rough. And so he ended up getting hit by a car when we were out, when he was staying at this lady's house and, um, he ended up passing away. And when I was, you know, connecting and just saying goodbye to him and all this, he showed me that he was a Marine and that he had three pre human lives before this life, but he was never, ever experienced love. And so he chose to come back as a dog and he wanted to experience love, which made so much sense when I figured, cause he showed up as a Marine. Um, and it, it like, it made so much sense that he was a Marine in his previous lifetime. Cause the way this dog acted, it was just crazy. He just loved to fight. And it wasn't that he was being mean. He just loved it. He got a thrill out of it. And he was such a good dog before he passed. Like we got him in a good place, but he, he ended up passing. And so, you know, pets, Pets come because they want to experience sometimes, sometimes that's the only thing they've ever experienced. And sometimes they've experienced human life. Sometimes they've experienced different, different forms as well. Hmm. 
I didn't realize that humans could come back as a something non-human. Oh, definitely. I mean, like, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, I could see us like an ET, but I just wasn't expecting like an animal. Yeah, they we as souls, we can decide, you know, what and how we want our next journey to to be. And, you know, being a dog isn't beneath a, a human. It, it's, you know, they have the capacity to love. And so for him, that's what he really needed for his soul to evolve to the next level. And what he chooses to do after that, what soul and what he wants to do, I'm, I'm sure he probably won't come back as a dog. I'm sure if he wants to come back and what he wants to do will be different. I'm sure. But I've had... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm I said I've had... I was going to say, I'm, I feel like there's a lot of people that would like to come back as a dog because, you know, so many dogs are treated so well and oh, for are sure. given so much unconditional love. Oh, yeah. They're like children. Right. If they get a good family, they definitely are. Yeah. I think one of my favorite things to see is a child meeting a dog for the first time when they just both love each other because that's like the perfect example of unconditional love. Oh, it's so cute. It really is. It really is. All right, let me get back to some more readings here. I have a whole thing full, and I want to try to to um, get some, you know, help everybody. Uh, hi, my wait. Let me see this one. Um, maybe this is this is maybe a lot of questions, but you maybe can answer one at least. Hi, my name is Aaron. I had an out of body experience when I was asleep once. What about me allowed me to do that? So your soul is wanting you to see how multidimensional you are. And by having that experience, you can see that you're not just your human body and your soul's wanting you to take a deeper path in, in your spirituality. And so the thing you've been thinking about studying start like that's the big message there is like just go start what it is that you've been thinking about studying because your soul wants you to live a more spiritually guided life and there's big things on the horizon for you and it starts with that thing that you've been wanting to do wanting to study all right um let's see um uh, let me go. I, I can you do this many many people want to know their life purpose uh Is that something you can i can answer? do some yeah I've got a ton of them that I, you, you want a lot of like would, here's one would linda, it be okay i'll just give you go like ahead. one here's linda schneider life purpose Is, does she have a question or is she just I guess people I guess that's life just purpose. wanting to know what her she's wanting to know what her life purpose is. Like I said, that's a very common oh. question that keeps popping up. Yes, it's very common. So here's what I'm going to share, just a general statement first. We have many, 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 many life purposes in our lifetime. Walking an old lady across the street and being helpful in that particular moment could be one of your purposes. Another purpose could be being a mother or a father or um, taking care of someone. Like there's many different purposes. Your chapter right now, what was her name again? Linda Schneider. Okay, Linda Schneider. Linda, your, your, one of your purposes right now is to learn how to say no. That is one of your purposes right now. And it's really setting up really good boundaries, learning how to say no, because what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to take better care of yourself and self-care is top priority is what they're saying. And so learning how to say no is part of the purpose. All right. So I hope that's helpful. Elizabeth Nagel, I'm looking for a job and I have no idea what to do. The insights. Yes. Make a list of everything that you are good at. So it could be like, I'm great at talking to people or I'm great at problem solving. Make a list of all the things you're good at. Make a list of your fantasy ex jobs and just brain dump 
as many as you can, set a timer for 10 minutes and just start brain dumping all these different jobs. Don't worry about the how, don't worry if you have a degree, don't worry what that looks like, just brain dump. And what they're saying is what by doing these exercises, what you're going to identify is some things that your inner child has want, wanted you to do for quite some time, but you're, you're, you haven't listened and, or you've forgotten. They're saying it's like amnesia. And so one of the next thing that you can do, this is three, three exercises. The, the last and third thing is to uncensor journal for 10 to 15 minutes around, um, what your life would be like when you feel fulfilled. And so it's like, you could just start off by saying, I'm so fulfilled because, and then just start writing for 10 to 15 minutes and just let your pen flow and let your brain go wherever. It doesn't matter what you're writing. Don't worry about punctuation. Don't worry about grammar. Don't worry about spelling, just write. And what's going to come out of that is a truth from your soul of what wants to come forward. And you can do this several times because the first time you might just get nervous and overthink it. So just do it again if if that happens. All right. Um I have um um all right the next one. I'm please forgive me if I'm pronoun- mispronouncing your name. It looks like Laisa Dardier. Hi, my name is Laisa. What is the significance of seeing a green dragon in my mind's eye? Is this related to the green triangle symbols that I'm attracted to? Uh, yes and no. No, the, um, if you are not already, it's, it's what it means is the dragons want to come and work with you. The, the elementals, the, the dragon elementals want to work with you. And yes, that symbol is connected to them, but that symbol, it means so much more than just working with dragons. Um, you can just call forward that dragon and start working with it and talking with it and seeing how it wants to work with you. All right. The next one is for Roxel, R-O-X-L. Please read me. Need to know what to do about my mother, partner, kids, and I guess job. Oh, actually, my name is Roxanne. I guess her okay. screen name is Roxel, but her name's Roxanne. Okay. They're saying you got a lot going on. And so what we're they're going to focus on you. Um, what's really important right now is that you make up your mind that you are just as important as everyone else in your life is to you who has to be the most important is you to you because the more that you start taking care of yourself the more that you're going to recognize how to take care of yourself in relationships if you take care of yourself in your relationship with yourself you'll start taking better care of yourself in relationship with others and so they're saying take a step back take a day retreat this can just be a a a, a day by yourself going somewhere, getting out of the house, but take time for yourself and reflect on how, what would it be like to really make yourself the the biggest priority in your life? And what does that look like? And how does that feel? Because that's going to allow you to start opening up to what wants to, um, they're saying metamorphosis, like there's a metamorphosis that's going to happen within you and and it's going to happen within your family as well. So I hope that's helpful. All right. Um, I had one here. Um, I guess the person's name is Chris. Chris, comma, why am I unsettled in this life? The first thing they said, the guardians, is that there's unfinished business. Part Part of you coming back is to really make amends. Um, Making amends means um, what they're showing me is we all have different soul families and they're part of you coming back into this life is making amends with some of your soul family members. Sometimes in previous lifetimes, we can have, um, 
let's say enemies and maybe we, and I'm not saying you did this. So just, just know this is just an example. Sometimes we can have an enemy and one of us kills that enemy. And then we come back in this lifetime and we could be siblings or we can be um, lovers. And the thing about for you, um, going back to the person that's asked the question is there's, I see two and I see someone kind of fade it so that what that tells me is this person's already passed it because I say I'm seeing two and a half people because the faded person's a half. So that person already passed. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't make amends with that person that already passed, but there's two people in your life that it's really about making amends with and making peace and healing karmic karma between the the three of those relationships with you. The next one is Melanie Kos Kos Melanie Kosravi. I believe okay. it's Kosravi. Any messages from for me from my mom who recently passed away? All I hear is I see you, I see you, I see you. Um, and then it's almost like I see like big goggles with big eyes coming through, but what is the message? Is that it? What I'm hearing is I see you in everything you do. Um, and I'm just going to give an analogy because the way that I'm seeing it. So it's, a, it's almost like if you, oh, and now I get it. Okay. So um, if you're wanting to connect with her, if there's any moment in time where you feel like someone's watching you, that's your mother. And what she's saying is like, I, she's really honed in on you. And when, when spirits transition, they go through a transitional period. And sometimes the spirit can come show up really quickly. Sometimes it takes them a little bit to show up where the family members can notice. Um, I see you noticing her more in like three-ish or four-ish months because um, her I see her her energy getting really, really strong, but the, she's already sending you signs and symbols. Um, and there's three distinct symbols. One of them is a bird. Another one is um, a coin. I don't know what kind of coin. I just hear coin. And then um, something with purple. It's it it it's really fuzzy, so they're not telling me exactly what it is. But purple coin and, and some type of bird. So if that's helpful. Hello, I'm Rose. I'd love to know if Edward and I have experienced a previous life or lives together. So that's a yes or no. Oh yeah, that's question. true. That's a yes or no question. Right? Um, which is which is okay. Um, I, my immediate what I heard immediately was a was a no. Um, and that's why I don't like yes or no questions because there's it's just a yes or a no. Where, um, but to, to go back to it, that doesn't matter. Um, what matters is the connection that you have, and there's there's connection there and they're saying follow the connection amy after watching this podcast tonight people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions yeah. are you open to that yeah so i i'll do um i do two different types of readings like i'll do rapid fire readings like this where i'll get on and i'll do a bunch of them mm -hmm. um and then I'll also do a readings for my podcast, which is Awakening with Amy Robeson, where I'll actually bring four people on Zoom and I'll do a reading in front of everybody. And we use that for the podcast show. So if you uh, go to my website, theamyrobeson.com, theamyrobeson.com, um, you can sign up for our free healings. We have 20 plus free healings on there. And then you'll join our list and you'll get notified whenever we do any like free master classes. Like we're getting ready to do our free master class for DNA. Um, so I'll do a bunch of DNA um healings and things like that coming up soon. So are you doing these rapid fire healings on YouTube as a as a live stream there? 
Um, I usually, it, it's funny. I have, I just started doing lives on YouTube, which is weird. I should have been doing a long time ago, but um, I might actually, I might start doing them on YouTube because I've always done them on Facebook, but um, I actually, maybe I'll do that um, soon on, on YouTube because I think that'll be a fun way to, to, to do that. What's your channel called? It's just Amy Robeson, A-M-Y-R-O-B-E-S-O-N. So Amy Robeson. Do you have anything else that you're working on that you want us to know about? Yeah, I should have a book coming out later this year. Um, and then I have a documentary that I just did with Joe Vitale that was in The Secret that's coming out later this year as well, um, which is all about living at zero limit. So there's some big projects coming out that I'm really excited about. Hmm, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, Amy, um, before I finish up, can you leave us tonight with one last positive message? Yeah, absolutely. So let me, I'm going to channel a message from the guardians. So um, the guardians are saying that what you seek is what you'll receive. If you seek love, love will appear at your door. Love will appear at your heart. Love will appear within the eyes. Love will appear within the within the zone. And I'm putting that in quotations. And what they mean by that is it's, it's within your aura, it's within your quantum radius. If you seek stress and you talk about your stress and they're saying that right now, it's so important to stop talking about how stressed out you are and start focusing on reframing. I'm stressed. Let me actually ground right now and release that stress from my body. Hmm. Now I'm feeling more positive. Mm, now I'm feeling more grounded. Now I'm feeling more focused. And they're saying that that reframing is going to support in attracting the things that you're wanting to attract in your life and that your words follow you around no matter what. So start paying attention to your words and start paying attention to the love that you seek because that, that love is going to appear when you start paying attention to it more. And uh, what else do you want to say? Be the change, be the love, and just be you is what is really most important right now. Because lots of things are changing. Yeah, that's true. Amy, At a rapid fire. <laughs> yeah. Amy, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us tonight. I really Thank appreciate you. you and I wish you massive success in whatever. Thank you. I appreciate you and I appreciate your wife. And thank you guys for, for asking questions. All right. We will see you next time and contact us when your book is out. We, we can I, have you come back and talk about it. I definitely will. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, she's gone. I didn't even have to take her out. All right. A big round of applause for Amy. That was great. And I need to get tell, I uh, wanted to say thank you real quick before we go to our next guest. First, I want to say thank you to Shira for the super thanks. Thank you very much, Shira. And the next one is to Laisa Dardier. Thank you very much, Laisa. And for Roxanne, thank you very much. So thank you all so much for that super thanks. And for all the members out there, thank you for being a member. Really appreciate that as well. And our next guest should be here any moment. Next guest is named Kate Colson, who had a near-death experience and met her higher self. And I think there's even more that she will be talking about. So she should be here, like I said, any moment. And I hope that, um, let me just, Looks like she's having a problem. Let me assist her. That again. So it's there. It's my. And by the way, if you haven't seen the NDE that I posted the other night, last night, I think that's an NDE that's a one that you, it's like a. I don't know, can't miss, or it's, a, it's an NDE that you shouldn't miss. So if you haven't checked that out, I highly recommend you go check it out. I'm 99% sure you won't be dissatisfied with it. And if you're into aliens and UFOs, make sure you check out 
today's video with this man that um, we talked about how a voice instructed him to go, he lives in Vegas, to take a drive up to Area 51, which is like two hours away, and on his way he encountered a UFO. And then we get deep into retro causality and synchronicities, which I think he gave me a definition, which may be my favorite definition of a synchronicity. And um, Kate's here, so I guess you're going to have to watch the video to, to find out about that. So let's bring Kate in. Right, connecting to audio, so audio will be connected in just a second. It's interesting how the video, Kate, are you there? Yeah, can you see me? I can, welcome. Can you see me? I can. You Let can? Let me just turn up the volume real quick. And what I like about Saturday nights is just like you and the last guest, I'm meeting you in real time. You know, I mean, I've never, we've never met each other face to face, so it's great to see you. Where are you from? Um, I'm from Topeka, Kansas. Oh, Kansas. And I, cool. yeah, I lived a good portion of my adult life in California, mm -hmm. um, but I've been back to Kansas. I live in a uh, suburb of Kansas City, Kansas now. Really? Do you like Kansas better than California? Do I? Yeah. Personally? Oh, <laughs> no, I really miss California. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, I, I, don't just... know, I don't know what part you were in, but if you're in Southern California, the weather's in. I was um, primarily in Napa Valley, so, so. It's probably pretty amazing, too. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. All right, well, let's start with your NDE and and the day that it happened. Can you start there? Sure. Actually, could I start a couple of weeks early? If Just... you don't have too long of a backstory. Okay. Um, so I'm really, I'm not really good with um, dates, but I think it was around probably 2003. Um it was Valentine's Day, and I was often single on Valentine's Day. So I was doing the number where I would, I was in bed crying because I didn't have a Valentine. And um, I suddenly got this message that, um, that this, the spirit guide or angel said, don't worry because you're soon you're going to know what true love is. So I stopped crying and I felt a sense of ease. And then two weeks later, um, I understood what um, the spirit was talking about. Um, I've had a lot, a lot of different uh, spiritual experiences that um, can't be described. I mean, can't you can't understand them like logically. So. Um, so I've had a lot of different kind of messages and visions and that kind of thing. But um, so the night of my NDE, um, it's kind of it's kind of hard to understand the first part. Uh, I'm still um, I'm still trying to figure that out. But I was with a friend at a Qigong class, and it was it was a very nice class and everything, but at some point, the instructor pulled out a sword, and he said that that sword had killed um, thousands of people in wars. And as soon as that happened, it sounds like a story, but this is actually what happened. I um, I suddenly felt really sick, and I it felt like I've never felt that sick before. I felt severely nauseous and I couldn't couldn't barely walk um my friend got me in the car and he said to pray to um Archangel Michael um so I began uh, praying and begging <laughs> for Ar Archangel Archangel Michael to um to help me and um all of a sudden I 
just had this experience of leaving my body through my crown chakra and then um, going through this like magical magical sky with like the really beautiful stars and then I ended up um, when I looked up I saw about six or seven angels um, they were kind of flying around and um, I could only see the underneath them it was dark because the shadow was it was the shadow that I was seeing um, but their wings were probably around I don't know 10 feet maybe huge um, and as they flapped their their wings I could hear like a whooshing sound like like that <laughs> um, and uh, one thing about it is that it was like everyone there in the experience they looked at me as if I wasn't supposed to be there they're kind of like I don't know, they weren't confused, but they were, um, like, it was a surprise for them. Like, I wasn't supposed to be there. Um, I thought that was interesting. Um, so pretty much, I mean, I saw some different things. Like, um, one thing I heard, like, the most, um, most beautiful sounds. It was, and I could see some people that, that were there. I mean, I don't know if they're people, but they looked like angelic. They didn't have wings, but they looked like angelic beings, and they had white robes and kind of white with gold. Um, and they were um, they weren't using words to sing, but they were using notes, um, kind of like harmonizing with different notes. And I got the. Um, so I started to experience like a telepathic um, way to communicate. So what I, the message I got from them was that they were just praising God. And that was their way of um, praising God and thanking them for all of creation, I guess. Um, so then after that, I saw, I went to an area where they're all different kind of colors. They were like, um, you can, you. Ha I've never seen those kind of colors before on earth. They were just um, really vibrant, really like static, alive and static. Um, and then, what else did I see? Okay, and then I just telepathically asked the um, angel, um, if I could see heaven. So I, um, it was like I was flying on his or her back, um, but I kind of just made a direct, a direct flight, if you will, um, to this area. It was like orange, um, energy. It was vibrating at a very very high rate like it was that particles were like bouncing like a fizzy soda pop um but it was also like really gossamer most like um like spider webs kind of they were all entangled with like little fairy lights <laughs> in them and um i saw this man walk by he um he had like a brown robe on he had he was bald and he had a goatee and he just kind of like um was like was walking to the side and then he turned around and looked at me and then he just went back to walking <laughs> so that's one thing i i still don't know who that that being was um but it looked like a looked like a person um so then after that um the angel flew me over to what I, um, the only way I can explain it is it was like a big cave. It was like a um, big, yeah, just a big, huge, huge cave, um, you know, with made of rock and everything. And then um, as I moved closer to the entrance of the cave, I, I just was, I felt overwhelmed with this, like, last of of really intense like feeling of love and um 
it was it was so powerful that it made me feel I felt like I just completely surrendered like dropped to my knees even though I didn't have knees and when I was on the journey um and I felt uh, Jesus's presence there what what's surprising to me is that I didn't actually see Jesus like visually but I could feel his presence with me were you a Christian and, before this happened? So would you be expecting to see Jesus? Yeah, I was a Christian. Mm, maybe like, uh, how long ago was I? Not very long, actually. Maybe three years or something. So yeah, I was, I thought that, I thought that I would meet him, but um, I didn't. Um so um after that experience just feeling that immense kind of love that kind of just took over my whole being um they kind of uh, the angel kind of took me over to this place that um it was like a storage area like they were like closets um but they were like the walls of the closets were invisible but you could see like different uh, different beings, each in their own like closet space, kind of like just floating there. And um, I was told that the certain one um, who didn't look anything like me now um, was actually my higher self. Um, and she, um, it looked like a she, um, she had really, long straight black hair and really white skin um whiter than than I am um basically she just told me that I was off track that um that at the time I had I mean I had worked in the field um as an art therapist for a long time I had a you know master's degree and at the time that I had that um I was parking cars and I think selling uh, home security devices or something. So um, it completely made sense to me. But um, yeah, it was it was very interesting. Did your higher self um, tell you what your purpose is here? What's interesting is. She showed me a picture of my twin sister. My twin sister's a doctor. And my twin sister, Lori, she is, she's very like focused and driven and um, on this, you know, very grounded in her purpose in life. So I kind of, it didn't, it, she, the, um, my higher self didn't say exactly what I should be doing, but just that I needed to, um, get grounded and to move into whatever my purpose was, like, um, help. I mean, I have worked as a, um, psychotherapist and art therapist and, um, and a coach, um, so yeah, just I was just so way off, <laughs> off track with those, um, you know, those jobs that weren't even in, I mean, even close to my profession. So, all right, I don't want to interrupt you, but I, I feel like we already, I already did. So before we carry oh, on, before we go, I want you to carry on. But before we do so, do you think it's possible that you were killed? By a sword in a previous life or something and that's what caused you to mm. have such a reaction to seeing this sword that is a really interesting question i'm not sure because i've always been like really sensitive um i'm an empath and i pick up on energies um like i'll pick up on other people's energies and um, have to clear it because it's not doesn't even have to do with me so I think I mean this is just my guess but I think that like there was some kind of um, spirit that was attached to the sword and then 
somehow because I am so empathic, I it, somehow it came towards me and like started a, attack, like an attacking entity? me. Like an entity? Yeah, I mean, wow. that's that's my, um. that's what I think. I know a lot of people think that's crazy, but um that's what i that's that's what i've that thought for a while did you sense that entity once you left your body <clears throat> no i felt completely relaxed i mean com like completely at ease and yeah i mean i didn't feel I didn't feel any anxiety or any pain or anything like I was when I felt like the spiritual attack. All right. So let me get you back on track. You, you encountered your higher self, which was a woman that had long black hair and your higher self made you aware that your life's way off track. Right. Then yeah. <laughs> well, Pretty much, like when I when I I got back, um, I kind of fell that back down into my body like a boom, and then my somehow my senses were really acute. Like I wanted to touch everything, like textures, and it was like I was amazed by how awesome all the everything felt and the sensations and stuff. Um, I'm not sure if that's because you don't feel sensations in heaven or it's because I don't know. I, I don't really know. You, or I felt maybe I felt more intense sensations in heaven. And then when I dropped back into my body, it was still lingering in that kind of uh, hyper sensitive place. I'm not quite sure. I think it. I think the latter explanation makes more sense. So once you got back, did you change your life at all in any way? Yes. Um, well, when I actually for like probably like two or three days after, I felt like completely relaxed, almost like. I kind of explained it as like it felt like milk was going through my veins, like um this this white liquid peace kind of feeling. And unfortunately that wore off after a couple of days, but um yeah, not too long since that happened, I um I started applying for different jobs in my field and I ended up, that's when I ended up going, moving to um, Napa Valley and uh, I was working with veterans. Um, so yeah, I got back into the game and um, so yeah, it was a, it was a good awakening and um, I obviously was very unhappy, not, not doing anything with my life as well so i just felt much more much more much happier so after your experience did you notice you had any new abilities that could be considered to be hmm. psychic well i've all i mean I, i've always had some like clairvoyance like seeing things in my mind um a lot of angels a lot of, um, I guess you'd say they're spirit guides. I've even heard um, audibly, um, like, them talking to me. Um, since the NDE, I don't know, because I kind of just, like, switched to California and the Napa Valley. And um, I did... One thing that did happen is I went to a um, past life regression um, hip hypnotherapist, and um, that was, I don't think people really experience, uh, experience past life memories as that. It was like, I, um, while I was going through it, I re-experienced these lives as if I was, I were in them, but 
that was also kind of a confusing um, experience because one of my lives was as the Virgin Mary and I saw or gave when giving birth to him like in a barn and um, I, I remember I could smell his head you know like a baby smell and he was laying on my bare chest like this and um, I felt so so much love for this little baby um <laughs> so obviously you know virgin mary is like a big deal so i was very confused about that um the other two the other two past life uh experiences i had were one of a man who um uh committed suicide and i was he was in he was in a car and I saw him like turn off the road into the you know into like a, a rock formation and I saw like the uh black condor birds like <laughs> um flying above there uh and I felt my head hit the windshield saw it cracked and then that was that one. And then I had one more um, of, it was of a man who just got divorced from his wife. He lived on a some kind of beach and I was walking on the beach feeling like uh, that really sad that the relationship didn't work. <laughs> so it, they were, um, they were very intense and after those experiences, I, you know, I didn't know, I, I, I never really shared any of these kind of things with, you know, with people I was, you know, in my life because I know that they wouldn't believe them. They would think I was crazy and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, at this point, so, at this point in your life, do you fear death at all? No, not at all. I'm actually, I'm not depressed anymore. I was, you know, I was clinically depressed for most of my life. And um, it's been like two years that I've been completely free of like those suicidal thoughts, but I'm really, uh, I'm really looking forward to when I die. Cause I know I'm gonna be re reunited with, you know, my mom who passed, um, 32 years ago and my dog and um you know my relatives and, and friends and that kind of thing so yeah i have no there's no ounce of of fear related to that just just thinking about it makes me feel kind of warm and and good at any point after you came back were you disappointed that you did and you wish you would have stayed there Oh yeah. Um definitely. I um I I should mention this part. Um after I was in I was I worked in California in Napa Valley for about nine years. Um I was then in a really bad uh, dog attack accident. Ended up uh coming back to Kansas so my brother and sister could help me out um and then I I just fell into like a really deep depression and um experienced like severe uh chronic pain and that kind of thing and about okay and then I want to lead up to this then at some point um I probably cried like every night for like three years. I mean, it was it was absolutely horrible. Um, and at one point, I fell to my knees and begged, begged God to help me. Um, and at that point, the next day when I woke up, I felt like my pain was gone for one thing. The other thing was I felt a 
like a direct connection with God. Like he, like he was, he was talking to me like on a daily basis, or it may have been a spirit guide or an angel. I, I'm not sure. I didn't even um, think to like ask who it was. Um, but it was, it, I call it an information download. Um, so I just got over like a three month period. I got a bunch of, um, a, a bunch of, a lot of downloads. Um, and when that was over, I fell so hard with my depression without and without having that connection with spirit that I used to I I tried to commit suicide and ended up in, ended up in a psych hospital um and oh goodness about 2 years later everything started happen happening for for my soul to evolve um yeah so <laughs> i forget what i was gonna That's say. Okay. Now, i think i went are you <laughs> using a green screen i mean or a, like screen. are you are you having is that like a fake background or is that really your background that we're seeing in the camera oh no it's not real <laughs> okay it was because i was want you practice art therapy and I was wondering if you were also oh. <laughs> an artist and if that was your art hanging in the background but apparently that's not no yeah I am I really enjoy the painting I it's it's something that's very therapeutic for me and yeah I I studied and have had um have been practicing art therapy therapy for like 20 20 some years so when you it's, when you practice art therapy and you have people i guess draw stuff or paint stuff are there certain symbols that are common for certain problems like if somebody paints i don't know whatever like a snake or whatever that that usually means something you know what i mean yeah i mean they can be like they're it can be like that, but for the most part, it's just like each person is is an individual and in the symbols that they use. Um, I think since I am an empath, I kind of um, I'm really in tune to that. Um, maybe other art therapists are too, but um, yeah, I would say it's a pretty much like a it goes on an individual basis, but. Of course, I mean, like, you can't, you can't really lie. When someone does art, you, you, it never lies. It always, like, the person might draw a face that looks sad, and they say that they look happy. Well, I know that, <laughs> I know that the real, uh, what's really going on is that they feel sad. Let me ask you um, this. Have you ever gone to art gallery and started looking at professional people's painting start analyzing them from their paintings like you could say oh <laughs> you know picasso painted this i bet he had this problem at this time yeah i mean like some things like picasso's blue period that was <laughs> that was a pretty big um uh, a big you know like had to do with depression and Oops, sorry. Um, you know, Van Gogh with the, his breast strokes, you could tell, you know, that he was manic. Um, things like that. But sometimes uh, professional artists, you, you don't see as much of the, um, the they're, well, evaluating their um, psyche because they're going by, um, like, the art principles. You know, like comp they they learned how to do pleasing compositions, and they learned that certain colors look good together. So they're so the more um, the the professional artists aren't as easy to read as you know, like just anybody. Is ultimately art therapy or music therapy just a tool to finally get the person to open up and talk about what's going on for them, like you? 
see you say, Mr. Jones, I see you painted a eagle. What does that mean to you? That kind of helps them start communicating. Um, pretty much, I just use it like it's. I mean, it's used as a communication tool. Like, if you have a if you have a child who has experienced difficult gift difficult things, it's very like children's natural language is through um, is through symbolism and through um, art. Um, because like art therapy is goes beyond you know language. It can um, anyone anyone can express themselves through it and from across the world or whatever. It has similarities as someone that lived here. Um, but what was I saying? Um, tell me that again or well, ask me that again. Well, here's another example. You said that you moved out to California to work with veterans, right? Mm -hmm. So would, a, for example, well, this is not the exact same question, but would a lot of them start painting pictures of war and stuff? Yeah, I worked with like the younger soldiers for a while and they were, they were more expressive in terms of, um, yeah, working through their post-traumatic stress or disorder, their their trauma, um, they would, yeah, they would like, I knew this one client um, would make these like massive uh, um, villages where he would have, he would have the, that's more like play therapy, but he would have the, you know, the characters killing each other and in tanks and and all that kind of thing. Um, but the, the older guys that I mostly worked with, um, they were of the generation that it was like, you didn't have time to do therapy. It was like, uh, survival and the man worked to put the, you know, food on the table. And, um, for the most part, when I worked with them, it was mostly just, I don't know, getting them, um, getting them to just do very simple things. Um, they would, they would talk about some things would get triggered, like when they were doing, um, the art and then they would talk about like some of their trauma from the past, but a lot of them were very stoic. And, um, I think they just held it deep, deep, deep within them, which was, which was sad. But, um, but yeah, do so you, um, do the way... Think, do you think that your near-death experience in some way made you a better art therapist? If so, how? Well, I definitely felt like it was my life purpose. Um, I, since my NDE, I have been really a lot more spiritual and had a stronger connection with God. Um, so pretty much, you know, like when I, and I still do this, I get up in the morning and I ask, um, God, how can I serve you today? So I try to stay as purposeful with my actions, um, as I can. Um, yeah. But I was gonna um I was gonna go back to your question about art therapy. Um a lot of the times I would use it in a way that um like you would ask them like uh create create some or use colors, symbols, shapes, lines, words, um to express how you feel when this happens or um or just different different things that I would that someone could actually talk talk about but it's so much easier just doing art therapy because it like I was saying that there's no there's no lying in it. <laughs> it's a very honest um communication tool and 
especially with um, children, they just do not have the language to express their feelings or or like uh, complicated emotions or personal personal thoughts, that kind of thing. So, but yeah, if, I think it's great. <laughs> if you are, how are you inspired by your experience? My NDE? Mm -hmm. How does it inspire? Um, well, it's just very comforting to know that, that God, um, is always there if you reach out and, um, I'm never alone, even though I felt alone at some points in my life, I, I just know that I'm never alone and that, um, there's always, like, when I, when I feel when I feel anxious or fearful about doing something, I just know that um, through Christ who strengthens me, I can I can do anything with with Him by my side. All right. Well, after watching this podcast tonight, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions. For that. Oh sure, yeah, I'd love. I'd love that. What's the best way to contact you? Well, um, you can email me at authentic. Where did I write it down? Authentic Warriors Coaching at Outlook dot com. Um, I'm also right now my my work is focused on helping uh, women to become and empower empowered to be their authentic selves and to drop into their um, their power and um, their life purpose and to just experience a better life. And I, um, I incorporate art therapy, uh, guided meditation, energy healing, and um, I think that's what I wanted to say. And I, I have a um, very first and third Tuesday at uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Central, and 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Um, I have a, I'm doing master classes. So on May the 7th, I'm going to focus on, uh, we do clearing and then manifesting, co creating. So May 7th is going to be financial abundance. May 21st is um, healing and optimal health. June 18th, Oh, June 4th is Cultivating Happiness. June 18th is Stress, man stress Management, uh, Emotional Regulation. So um, they're only $35 a session. Um, they're like 75% off for Jeff Mara podcast listeners. So, Well, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message tonight? Just now, I would say just, if you want to do something, just go ahead and, and go for it because life is very short. Tomorrow was never promised and spirit is always there to have your back. Kate. Thank you for your message, and thank you for coming tonight and sharing with us. We really appreciate you. I feel very privileged and blessed because I know you have some very great uh, guests on here. So I thank you so much for for allowing me to come on here, and um, and God bless. Sending love to everyone. Thank you, Kate. God bless you, and have a great rest of your evening. You too. All right. Good night. Bye. And that was a big round of applause for Kate. Um, all right. So this is from Shira. And she is telling me to tell people how to get on Discord. So. Discord is kind of like Facebook, but different. And you have 
I would I kind of call them chat rooms, but basically I think they call it a server and I have a bunch of rooms. So what you've got to do is that you go to discord.com and you sign up and get a free account. It's real simple. And then um, once you get your account, all you have to do is email me and my contact um, Yeah, okay. And um, so you email me personally, my contact info is in the description below, and I'll give you the link. I used to have the link just open and posted, but people were going in there and causing all kinds of trouble. So I had to stop that. And I had to kick everybody out and then change the link so no one could do that anymore. So it's real simple. There's probably at least 600 people there. And after the Saturday night show, like tonight, they'll all be hang. Well, not everyone, but many will all be hanging out there and you can go hang out with them there are different rooms you can talk in there's like ndes there's like um i think a ufo room and there's a services and there used to be people that would offer their services and so if you wanted if anybody there wants to go offer their services it's a free place so Let's say if you are a tarot reader and you want to practice your tarot reading skills, go there and make a post in there and say, hey, if anybody want a free tarot reading or whatever you want to do, that's there. Uh, as well as other things. And you can post, you can video chat, you can audio chat and, and, and whatever you want to do. So if you're looking for other people to hang out with that are like mine, I think it's a good place to go. And I hope that answers that for sure. And Mrs. Mika, I'm trying to get her over here without knocking everything down. You can still hear me. But Miss Mika just woke up. She's awake now. And boy, this earphone is really kind of uncomfortable on me today. So, Miss Mika's here to say hello to everybody. And I want to let you guys know that tomorrow night's video will be an NDE. She's taking a big yawn, so that means she's relaxed. And then uh, the next night will be a video that I did with Paul Anthony Wallace. So I recorded that. It needs to be edited. And he has lots of books out, and he's an international best-selling author. And we talked about what's going on in the current state of UFOs. Will we be in an invasion by ETs and different stuff like that? And as well as the historical accounts of what happened in history with ETs. So if you if that is something that you're interested in, I hope you will enjoy it. Usually his videos have done very well and a lot of people like him. So those two are coming up. Let's see what I have on the schedule for this week. Tomorrow I'm supposed to record an NDE. On Friday I have a busy I mean Monday I have a very busy day. I have an supposed to be with a woman named Sev Talk. I think she's a very famous UFO person. And I'm with a formal guy named Ragu. I don't know if that's his original name, but he was a former punk rocker, maybe a famous punk rocker, who's now become a monk. And he has a book out that we're going to talk about in his life. And Emily Cady, on Tuesday, I'm going to record about her NDE. And then there's a guy named Jerry Sargent. And I think he's pretty famous, and he's going to be coming on on Wednesday. I have my Thursday open. I'll probably fill that. Deborah Yates, I didn't put a note on that. What's going on that one? And then I don't have it any much else scheduled out in front of that. So I guess I need to get busy and start scheduling people again. And that's what happens to me sometimes, is I'll get my schedule really full, and then I'll kind of... um, And then I will take a break, I guess, or I won't stay as active as I probably should be scheduling guests. And then I'll, and then it kind of thins out a little bit. And then, um, you know, and then either, and then I'll find some people and or people will find me. And it's pretty cool now that I've gotten pretty much to a level that I'm, I'm, I feel confident that all you know having a daily show isn't easy, but I'll always have a guest or usually have a podcast to post. You know, of like I'm, I feel like I'm manifesting it, and so um, that's basically it for the evening.
Uh, unless you guys have any questions before we go. All right, sorry about that. I just needed to check in with my wife on something. Jennifer Morris said, you think you've been a, you've been a guest right before, right? I see Jennifer Morris in the chat, and it says, I just sent my book to the publisher. Woot, woot, miracle girl. Have you been a guest before, Jennifer? Your name is very familiar, and I think you may have been on uh, talking about your NDE. Either way, congratulations. Uh, on your book. That's amazing. That is amazing. I don't, I've never written a book, but I'm assuming it's not easy to do so. Yeah, I, I thought so. See, Jennifer Moore said she has been on. I think she's on for an NDE, so good for you. Do you remember what podcast number you were, Jennifer? Let's see what she says. Next live chat, the next live chat. So uh, Maggie, you might have missed it. Last Sunday, we had a live chat for the members, just a hangout. It's not live. I mean, it's live, but it's not like live. It's not like live live. That was, It's not like a live broadcast. Maybe that's the best way to put it. But I, once a month with the silver and gold members, I hang out with, I hang out with the members off the air but live and we all hang out and talk about whatever and so i finally got it down to where it's the first sunday of the month and so last sunday was the first sunday and it was probably the busiest night the busiest one ever so i think that i've kind of figured it out and everybody else is starting to figure it out um you know when that is and when they want to come out so it was cool and i hope more of you guys come that are already members Okay, Jay, is Jeff the same guy that used to do the Paranormal Ghost Stories podcast? Uh, I don't think I've done very many po ghost stories. I've died a little in the past, but I don't do too many because I, the audience is not really up. I don't really have the audience for it at this time. Whenever I do ghost stories, they don't perform where not many people watch them because that's not what they're not into it. So at some point I'm hoping that I can have any type. I think it's getting caught up here in the wires, any type of paranormal show and um, everybody will come to watch. I mean, really in a way, if you think about it, that everything intertwines, right? I mean, if we, we're talking about NDEs and people on the other side and people visiting, you know, people from the other side visiting loved ones here. And maybe the loved ones could be interpreting them as a ghost or maybe someone crossed over and they didn't go to the light and they're still roaming around our realm in some capacity. And so we might happen to perceive them as a ghost. So that's kind of why I feel like there's some, you know, there's an overlap. And maybe many things overlap. So, you know, that's what we, that's, that's where we're going to now. I think Mika may need a haircut. She's, yeah, yeah she says yes too. Um, Oh, I, you know, I don't know if he's still here, but Leslie Kings was supposed to come tonight and say and play some music for us. If you are here, Leslie, why don't you come now and, sh and, um, and join us? So he's supposed to be here at nine, but we don't have to wait until nine if you're here, Leslie. Jeff, your dog wants to say something. Mika. Do you want to say, do you want to tell us something? 
She's probably saying I want down, that she's looking away. I don't know. The ghost issue may be more complicated than that. Yes, that's right, Stephanie. That's right. Where did Jeff disc jockey at a radio station? Jeff never did DJ at a radio station. So, I that's I guess that answers that. Um, small prayer to all the innocent lives lost at Bondi Westfield in Sydney yesterday by the guy with the knife. May they rest in peace. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, I think there was like a stabbing at the mall or somewhere. Some guy stabbed a bunch of people. I don't know. I didn't really read a lot of the news on that. Oh, Leslie's coming in just a moment. All right, so if you guys are still here, don't go because Leslie's going to be here any minute. And we'll see what he's going to play for us. Now, if you haven't seen Leslie before, Leslie live channels while he's playing. While he's playing his music, he'll play for us. It's just channeling, playing whatever's coming to him. So um, that should be pretty cool. I think it'd be pretty cool. I like to have the chat so at least like this, when I'm looking down, if I could put it like right there on my screen and so... What do you guys think about that? If I had, when the guest comes on, where does it put me? I guess it puts me here, and then usually the guest is there. And then if the chat was right down the middle, I think that would be pretty cool because you could see both of us, you could see the chat, and even you guys could see the chat too. You know what I mean? You wouldn't even have to, I guess you're looking down at your screen anyways. But even when I look down at YouTube, I look at me and then I have to, my eyes have to go over here to see the chat. So if it was right in the screen, it might be pretty cool. What do you guys think about that? We'll see about that. Um, we, shall, we shall see. Your dog loves you so much. Thank you, yes. One of my, one of my guests told me one time that this, that Mika was a gift from God and I think the guest is right. She's the best dog that we've ever had. And I thought you were going to say something. And the interesting thing is she's so quiet. She almost never barks. Mm-hmm. All right, wait for Leslie King's. Leslie King, the reporter. No Space Academy. It's Leslie King's. I think it's King's, right? Leslie King. I'm getting confused. It's a male, and he's a pianist, by the way. I think I know who you're talking about, Leslie King, and I think that's a female. But I think he posted in here somewhere. I thought his last name is King's, like plural, A-I-N-G-S. Yeah, it is. Do you want someone to channel Art no. Bell? Maggie, if I ever land a channel, I want to channel Art Bell. That would be awesome. I have thought about seeing if I can get a channeler in here to channel Art Bell, but I don't know if many of you guys know who Art Bell even is. If you do, um, then someone says Art doesn't ring a bell. If you do, maybe type one in here because if you uh, would, or you're interested in that, I might be able to find someone who could channel Art Bell. That would be really cool. But again, like I said, I don't know if many of you know him or knew, knew, know of him, knew of him. Has any of your guests ever given you a reading? Occasionally they have. Occasionally. I miss Art Bell. I know Art Bell. Oh, by the way, oh, Shelly Clay. Wow, thank you that for very much for that super thanks. I really appreciate it. Here's a great story. Uh, the, I had a guest. When did I post him? And you can go see this. 
Uh, let me go back to my content so I can find it. What was the guest name? It was Joshua P. Warren. Joshua was just a, was a guest that I posted, I'm pretty sure, last week. He's number 1106. Joshua has a wooden E.T. statue that he got from Art Bell. And Art Bell got it from... Rush Limbaugh. And, and for those of you who don't know Art Bell, if you know Coast to Coast AM is something that he started. It's a show every night that's on, on your AM station, probably every city in this country. Um, and it's on, depending on your time zone, a central time zone is from midnight to 4 AM. Wherever you are, it's going to be different if you're not in central. But anyways, uh, and he's got a video about it. If you look up like, or I mean, a, a whole website, artbellstatue.com or Art Bell Alien Statue. Anyways, it's got amazing it. that it went from Rush Limbaugh, who gave it to Art Bell, and now Art Bell, now it went from Art Bell to Joshua Warren, and Art Bell autographed it. And I think it's so cool. So yeah, you guys just... can read about that. Leslie, are you here? I, I saw you entered. Yes, there you are. Yes. How are you, kind sir? Mm, uh, yeah, you know what happened? Just slept under your waterfall. <laughs> You've been asleep. I put you. We yeah. put you to sleep tonight, or I guess this morning because yeah. you're in Hong Kong. Yeah, <laughs> just the one I try for set up there. So, do you? Eat, I was assuming that you eat a lot of Chinese food since you live in Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah. Was there a lot of great restaurants nearby? Yeah, in everywhere restaurants. Everywhere. Do they even get? Yeah. Do you even get street food out there? Like people uh, can be. Yes, I definitely I like the street food. Yeah, I bet you it's amazing. In the same time, I just set up the other camera also. It's around the way here. Wow! So you, I was letting everybody know that you channel while you're playing. Yes. Oh, I can hear me double my voice once again. See what's That's going on. Maybe you've got two on. I don't know. Oh, I know why. Yes, no, it's okay. The camera. All right, there is. you are. So now you can see. Uh, you can see oh. Leslie's hands and know that he's not faking it. He's really playing. Not faking it. Leslie AI. <laughs> Leslie AI. <laughs> What a nice, your little dog also. Yeah. Waiting for. She's waiting. So, She's waiting for you. Yeah. Today, I was inspired for the first guest to speak about the light language. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And I like to uh, uh, involve, I call what you also mentioned, the tongues. That means the biblical way. Like speaking in tongues? Just, Yes, speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked about that. I don't know if you have yes, that. Yes, exactly. And uh, um, I think so. I will involve today the music for. Um, I heard about what's happening in Israel, Iran today. And uh, I feel in my heart, and probably there I slept also for often when uh, the presence of the God is strong. Your body can be weak. So uh, probably therefore I slept for I just praying for uh, not for any side, just for against evil things. So my music is right now will be um, probably the ch um, this direction. So as we can call war for music is not very, very, very peacefully but um, let us see what I, I get in just in my heart I am peacefully right people are telling people are putting in the chat that you need to speak up they can't hear you oh, okay speak up yes okay me, even the camera can come on this uh, microphone here hopefully it's better now and the music I think so need to yes also on uh, yes yes you can hear right right all right, are you ready to okay. play? Yeah, that's been time. So just a few minutes, 
let us see how it works out. So I need to be online, right? My fa face also. <laughs> if you want, or if you want to turn it off and just show your hands, that's fine. Whatever you feel I comfortable. I think so. It's better right now for too too energetic. I think so inside. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I I going. Supramura prapanera tremenisto promoneta sas le premenite supamaza kreshte fetimos. Embramatashta kantesto sopromone mans. Udama hana kata sopromomomomo shapa baba baba. Kopor mashta kapa midiriso sopromola prendizo somonor. Repashte ken arabas ten ken dizos ambor and or. Ubomashta pramere popo papa shapa kata sapa.
Supramanen Dios, la manera, la manera rosa. Sumona men derma ne glore sacama men al tu como nera sin señor. Copora mamido sapin honor la manera de socorro. Bravo, Leslie, bravo. Great job. Thank you very it almost much. were you you were I think you took it to a next to the next level and not only were you giving us light language, but you were singing it at the end. <clears throat> uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um just uh, very shortly. Uh, a little bit. Maybe I will be meet with E.T. Really? You're going really? to meet. You're going to be contacting an, an alien. Uh, it happened two days ago. Something very scary was. Uh, I thought maybe such meeting will be not too scary. But many years ago, uh, I live in a little island here in Hong Kong. And uh, this time I already had telepathically some connection, but I was very young in uh, in this <laughs> topic, and I immediately said, no, 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 I don't want any connection <laughs> with you guys, so I reject that. Yeah. But um, uh, right now, maybe talk a little bit this one of the, your podcast, and I said, no, I am open. <laughs> <laughs> and one of my friends also said, "Not be ready if you open for if you open, it's coming." So, um, of course, for how to connect with such uh, different dimensional uh, being, uh, I'm not sure. But uh, I was scared for maybe I need to go to doctor first. For maybe it's not easy, mm -hmm. but maybe I, I just be an old man. Suddenly, in before my eyes, the right side, um, come in a very interesting, what to say, maybe I see a little paper. <coughs> it's like it came up until here and very cleared uh, object, you know, um, what is uh, half my size, I cannot see. And, uh, and it's stand there for a few minutes what is look like oh my god that i be blind or what is this a little bit later i thought for there was not very natural there was something uh, supernatural i don't know and now i really asking the universe for if i need to heal my sight or or really something happening in this direction but uh, interesting for have some way a uh, fight came up for maybe this is something and step but this is not telepathic yet it's just about in view vision mm -hmm. maybe some of your network uh, have some experience a doctor and said oh no this is just uh, you have some gray problem or your eyesight you know but uh, that was very interesting and uh, I'm open, continue for uh, such things, and especially the music. Well, it would, be music. Am, it would be amazing if you could channel an E.T. and play some sort of galactic music. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very open for channeling such things. So, um, whenever, you know, uh, the God, the uh, source, and I, I, of course, I believe I believe Jesus is not about religion, but whatever, if possible, I'm very open. So you will special 
through music what you shared. Yes, I'm I'm very good, very very happy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Leslie, if you do meet up with an ET, you've got to make sure to get back here and tell us about it. Okay, definitely. Yeah, definitely. So, I'm very thank you for today, and uh, now my heart is really focusing. Uh, about what happening in Israel and Iran and the situation. And, uh, you know, very interesting for Rafa. Rafa, this place was the last time when I sent music, war from music, and the whole war is stopped there. <laughs> so, and it's just really, I sent the music more than one month ago, and uh, everything was really, uh, you know, what happening there in Ga uh, yeah, uh, Gaza, but this place is just stopped, it's something. I'm not sure for its continue or not, but it's really working. And many, many way showing about for, um, we, we can have this. So the music have a very big power if you channeling from the Creator. So we can experience prayer healing, deliverance, and Bible is share about uh, David played the harp and there was deliverance from the King Saul. Jericho is also in, no, it's Palestine and Jericho's wall collapsed through the, they play music. So it's, I mean, I'd be very happy for in your channel have many other musicians and Sedona, right? This is a, is a place, Sedona. That's correct. Sedona is in Arizona. Yes, this is very strong in my heart for visit this place. I don't know for how, but uh, uh, it's really, really, I I don't know why. I, I, I know a little bit about the place, about spiritually, definitely, but it's really in my heart, maybe meet with people there and uh, talking spiritually is very center also in the world so it's very interesting life hopefully we can have peace and love and we can have more and more connection about this universe beautiful universe with with with, with really many experience god bless your ministry and your uh, uh, podcast and uh, really greetings Mar mara also for his assistance and working hard and all the audience and thank you for time to time you give possible for a little bit playing uh, music today was really in my heart about once again with even the tongues and for singing so you know i just like to follow what he gave uh, in my heart so, well, Leslie, thank you for coming and playing we really appreciate you coming and um have a great rest of your day over there it's just started for you so enjoy your day god bless you and take care of yourself thank you so much wow it's a wonderful <laughs> you see if oh I do, yeah there you do you got coming. it going i gotta <laughs> set that up on mine so when i do that it does that i gotta maybe you can teach me i don't know i never <laughs> did anything is just working and always the right place right time yeah for right reason yeah, that's great. god bless you all right god See bless you. you take care <laughs> yeah. bye-bye all right that was leslie and we'll give him one last big round of applause all right guys well, thank you guys so much for coming and hanging with us Saturday, this Saturday night or Sunday morning. If you're over there on the other side of the planet, like Leslie, we hope to see you guys back next week. And, um, and, and hopefully we'll have another great show. So thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your day or evening, wherever you are. We love you guys. God bless you and good night.